Hey, you want to know what sucks about Anchor Down? This is our video, Good, Bad, and Ugly, of Anchor Down in Dandridge, Tennessee. Hey guys, we're going to give you our likes and dislikes of Anchor Down. But first, I'm going to give you the world famous Jared's Bike Tour. Okay, so on Jarrett's bike tour, he's going to come in through the entrance, go up past the office, and then he's going to start kind of zigzagging through where these back in sight areas are, the blue ones, and then around, you know, this side where there's more signature sites, and then down the hill over across this strip to the pool. You can bike around this little path here, which takes you down this hill, which is pretty steep. You're hitting the brakes the whole way down. Uh, kind of overlooks the fishing pier. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then comes to, down even further down the hill to the beach area. And then around to these premium sites, buddy sites are the purple ones. And then he's going back uphill. This is all uphill to this strip, which is all on top of the hill that overlooks both sides of the campsite. Or the campground so you've got the lake view the mountains over here and then if you're on this strip which we were site 10 this is kind of a hill going down this way and it overlooks the basketball and pickleball courts but either way everything on this strip is up on the hill and can see everything it's absolutely gorgeous i will even point out some of my favorite sites but i'll tell you right now my favorite site in the whole campground is this one right here, Site 27. It's got its own little fencing area on like in the yard. So you've got your own little private space and all of this is downhill. So it completely looks over the whole campground and has a gorgeous view of the lake and the mountains. Another thing I wanted to mention too was golf carts. This is very hilly and a lot of people will rent golf carts here. But we're here to tell you, if you have e-bikes, you don't need to do that. E-bikes will get you up and down all of this. Regular bikes, depends on your physical stamina. But e-bikes will certainly save you some money. Very nice campground. Very nice. Sights are pretty level. I did have to level my camper just a hair. No big deal. I love these big, huge fire pits. Everything is on stamped concrete. Everything looks nice. Back in sight. So you have a buddy sight, and one backs in, pulls in one way, backs in the other. That's kind of cool. Very much bigger friendly. Love these big fireplaces. Speed bump. This is kind of down closer to the lake.
it's all back in back in our pulling sights. Look at that view. Now the campground cafe wasn't open when I got here, so I can't tell you about it. But it is the first of October. And that pool was pretty chilly. But I did do the slide. Hey, Clark, and these bikes make it easy to get around. Mm -mm. No. Fine, I'm turning around. I'm gonna ride down that campground, that campsite. Oh, I got. No. How are you guys? Buddy the Elf. Pretty tiffin. If 
Valerie really likes these two sites. So we're really down from 169 down to 170, 171, 72, 73. Like all those are so cool. Some have the big stone fire pits. I mean, each little fire pit's kind of unique. Look at this one. I love it. Just bring your little chairs. It's not going anywhere. And this is the view. Get all the campers. You get the pavilion, the playground, and the beach, and the little boat dock. And see next door, theirs is just in gravel. And then next door to that, they have the big stone pit. Isn't this cool? I just love it. And also from 169, where I just showed you that fire pit, you go around up the hill here, and up there is, I believe, rows 1 through 29, which we were 10 on the back. And this row right here, I absolutely love. Site 27 being toward the end. And they look, they overlook everything. I think that's the coolest strip in the whole campground. Here's 159 and 160. They're buddy sites. Another example of buddy sites. Aren't they cool? Because you can pull up and then one backs in and you're friends. So you can hang out together. Isn't that awesome? And then 161 and 62 I liked as well. The view in the back's awesome, just like this one. And they've also got that um, fire pit down in the concrete. Love these ones. Okay, I've also decided I love site four. Look at this fire pit. And you've got some pines in the back, overlooks the pickleball area, little yard there, some space from your neighbor, and there's your front yard view. It's actually right across the street from my favorite site, which is 27, right over there. Isn't that gorgeous? Let's just savor the moment. So likes. What do we like about Anchor Down? What isn't to like about Anchor Down? You guys have already seen all the videos out there about this uh, particular campground. And if you haven't and we're the first ones, well, thanks for tuning in and watching ours. But we're probably a grain of sand in the amount of videos on YouTube about this campsite because, or campground, because it's so great. Of course, all concrete sites is something to love. It just makes the whole experience that much easier, cleaner. Maybe you don't need to put out your RV mat but love the concrete sites. The view is probably the best thing about this place. It is like a little camping paradise. I mean, the pool view overlooking Douglas Lake, the mountains, if you catch this on a sunny day, it's absolutely gorgeous. The landscaping, they've got the place beautifully landscaped with lights at night and just gorgeous flowers. The nightly rates, they're not so bad. That's something to love about this campground. I think the cheapest one start at 69. Mm -hmm. And then it was like 89 up to like 199 if you get the buddy sites. The Lux amenities. <laughs> I mean, the pool, obviously. Uh, the arcade. The dog park. The pickleball court. You can mm. you can just borrow their pickleball equipment for a couple hours. And then one thing that's really cool that they do, and I thought this was an ingenious idea, right above the beach area for the volleyball, they have like this pavilion with these anirondack chairs that like look over the lake and you know you can catch just a, just a really nice sunset out there yeah. or just enjoy enjoy the just you know there's something about sitting in a comfortable chair looking at water really and, pretty and it's just beautiful and then you know they had a decent decent wi-fi so i know like when i tried to get on i had to work a little bit on this trip and so when i tried to get on during the day on anchor downs wi-fi it wasn't bad but i also carry a hotspot with me so at night it seems like when people are, are home and trying to stream TV, it's can't it's campground it's campground internet. It's not, you know, you're gonna do a lot of buffering. <laughs> There's a cafe food truck on site, which mm -hmm. we didn't get to experience because it was closed. Um, we went over fall break, which was the first week of October, and I'm not sure why they were closed that week. But the fact that it's there is great. It's always nice to have a food truck on site. Um, the fishing pier, absolutely beautiful. Now we didn't use it this weekend, but oh my goodness, just the views and the the, how well kept it is, it's gorgeous. One thing I'll say about the campgrounds, they keep this place cleaned up and they have tons of staff running around. So, you know, they turn their sites quick every time uh, someone pulls out. You know, we were there for five days, I think. And so every time someone pulls out, it, it ain't but just a few minutes. 
And there's a guy up around a golf cart cleaning up the trash. If they left like their bags of trash out front, they're blowing off the sidewalk. They clean out the, the fire pits and they're gone. And I mean, and then it's like 37 seconds later, a camper's backing in. Yeah, they're on it. Yeah, I mean, they really do a good job turning their sights and keeping them clean. So that's actually really cool. And this could be a, a like or a dislike for you guys, but it's kind of out in the country. So for me, it's probably a like. But if you want to go to like um, the closest grocery store or in any kind of restaurant, it's probably like 10 minutes away. And when I say any kind of restaurant, I mean, that's like a Burger King or like a, a Subway. Well, they have like Bucky's is in Sevierville and Flapjacks. That that's going to be like a solid twenty minutes away. Yeah. And so uh, there is a, a grocery store that's not too far away. So, but if you're going in there and you don't want to like leave the campground, or you don't want to go more than five or ten minutes away, away, pack your fridge. So, because you know it's it's not real convenient to get. You're not going to run across the street to Dollar General and pick something up. Yeah, and we did this on that trip. Uh, we packed for the four or five days that we were going to be there, knowing that our desire was not to go into town during this trip and eat out. We wanted to stay as much as we could at Anchor Down mm -hmm. without having to do a whole lot of the, some of the ugly that we're going to get to. So the, so the one big thing um, that could be an ugly for you, and I don't really know if it, this is necessarily like an ugly, I'm not a crowds person. This is a matter of opinion. Uh, this is a matter of opinion. And, you know, and we, all ha we all have elbows and everybody's got an opinion. But anyway, so I don't know if this is an ugly thing or not, but, you know, I'm not a crowd person. We're not really crowd people. And Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg always draws a huge crowd. It doesn't really matter yeah. what time of year you're there. It's always busy. And that, to us, is a big turnoff. And so maybe you like the crowds, you know, like, but, you know, it's just it's kind of hard. It's it's. I don't want to say this. For me, for me, the crowds is not, that's not like an attractive thing to go do. That's not somewhere where I want to go. I like to be out and have a little bit of space, have a little bit of quiet. In Gatlinburg, you get up and, you know, you get away from the downtown area of Gatlinburg and you get that pretty quick. And that's what we liked about this campground. But if you're trying to avoid traffic and crowds, good luck because you're going to need it. <laughs> but the pro to it, if that's something you love to do, is that you're still just 30 minutes to Pigeon Forge. Mm -hmm. And I think it's 45 or an hour to Gatlinburg. So you can still enjoy those things. And we did. We enjoyed those things with our kids. But I think we're at the point now where we've done we've done those touristy things enough. Ripley's and, you know, the Titanic Museum is awesome. It's actually really cool. You should check that out if you're over there. Yeah. But um, maybe Anakista or, like, some of the most populated tourist attractions to us right now are just, like, it's just hard for us to, to enjoy it because we just don't like the crowds. So for us, that's one pro to anchor down is kind of further away from that, that kind of stuff. But in saying that, we actually went to Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg and we did two really cool things that you guys might enjoy as well if you're staying at anchor down and maybe you don't want to do like the most absolute populated touristy things where you're shoulder to shoulder downtown walking through the shops and stuff. Um, these are two things that you guys might enjoy as well. One is we took the bike ride on Cades Cove in the Smoky Mountain National Park. Now I'll say about going to camp, going to Gatlinburg that day is traffic wasn't bad because we went at like 5 a.m. So that was a really cool experience. Um, you know I will say like we we did there's not a lot of good information out there. There's tons of videos on it but we were worried, we were worried about parking, and I don't know if it was the time of year we went because we went to first of October, mm -hmm. but like there was tons of parking, and and you know like traffic's backed up everywhere. And when we got there, there was probably twenty or thirty cars waiting to go in because they closed the gates, but really the traffic wasn't bad. Um, my only gripe about the Cades Co ride is one hundred percent my fault, and it was cold that morning, and I thought I'm going on a bike ride, I'll be fine. Had a little thin shirt on, had shorts on, and I like to froze. My hands like to froze, but it was fantastic. It was beautiful. It was really early in the morning, so the sun was coming up, and you're in the mountains, and it's kind of foggy. They don't call them the Smoky Mountains for nothing. It was so pretty. Was so pretty.
So there's a few cars so far. I think it's about 7.30. The fog is gorgeous. We saw a big wild turkey, biggest I've ever seen. Our fingers are cold, but goodness sakes, it's a beautiful morning. How's Olivia doing in her Bucky's gas station pajama pants? <laughs> to do this bike ride. It is freaking amazing. Great Smoky Mountain National Park. This is Cades Cove Loop. This is only a smidge of it. recommend it. it go ahead. I will say on a parking just for what it's worth when you drive in there's probably a 50 to 75 parking spots on the left right before you go through the gate where you can park but there's also tons of parking down at the bathhouse at the campground which is the left right before you get into the Cades Cove so if you, if you you'll see those the signs for the horse tables and the campground hang a left pass the horse tables down on the left lots of parking Yes, just put in the Cades Cove campground in your GPS and it'll take you right there. But what they said online and all the blogs you read and all the YouTube videos is true. Sunrise is probably the best time to go. Because especially if you're going on a day that they didn't close it down to traffic, vehicle traffic. Mm -hmm. Because you're riding along on your bike with vehicles and everybody's stopping to take photos and I'm sure it can get crowded. But at sunrise... We did not experience that. Like it, it was a very comfortable ride. There were a few cars, but we didn't mind it at all. And being on those e-bikes, we could buzz right around, and you know, people were stopped. I will say is it really made it um, a lot easier to get in and like because there was a, a black bear or something at one point that everybody was looking at. And being on the e-bikes, you know, we said, "Yeah, it's cool," and we could just zip in and out of them yeah. and keep going and not have to wait on cars to get out of our way. Absolutely loved that ride. I want to do it again. But the point in saying that too is whatever you're researching online, I think we felt like a little bit overwhelmed. Like, mm -hmm. where are we going? How do we park? Where do we pay? But you can purchase your ticket right there, five bucks to park. All day, 24 hours. All day. So that experience took us probably, it was like two to three hours, biking 11 miles, 12 mm -hmm. miles total maybe. But that whole experience cost us five bucks plus the gas to get there. Mm -hmm. Sure, pack water, pack snacks, but the whole trip really only take you about two hours. I will say at sunrise, before the gate entrance opened, the bathhouse was locked. And hey, the bathroom was locked. I didn't know where else to go. So, you know, I think I'm just hoping there was no cameras around. <laughs> Second cool thing we did, which might contradict what we just said about crowds and tourism, we had never been to Dollywood before. So we wanted to do this. We had our daughter who likes amusement parks. Mm -hmm. And we understand, like, it's not like going to Disney. It's much smaller than that, of course, but just as nice, in our opinion. It was great. Actually, we loved it. I didn't feel like for fall break, the crowd was terrible. Although some locals were there saying, this is actually so crowded. We weren't expecting this. I'm like, actually, I didn't think it was too bad. Well, it's nothing compared to Disney. And so, you know, um, we just, Olivia wanted to ride some rides. And so, me, we rode, we rode some roller coasters. I don't think we stood in line any longer. Well, the longest one was that last one we rode. But for the most part, I think most of the lines were like 20 minutes and we were on a ride. Mm -hmm. And so I, to me, I'm like, all right, 
crowd wise, that's not, and it was crowded, but crowd wise, if we can get on a ride in 20 minutes, that's actually pretty good because we've been to Disney where it's like an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, it takes up most of the day. But no, loved Dollywood. Um, oh my gosh, if I could say my favorite part of Dollywood was the food, <laughs> it really was. Like, it was themed according to like, you know, the season. So there was like gumbo and they had like pumpkin bisque and they had like. Um, apple berry cider drinks like it, it it was really great i totally enjoyed it valerie i will i will tell you guys if y'all haven't figured this out about val you want to make val happy give her good food that's it, right i mean it <laughs> doesn't matter where it's at if the food's good she's a happy camp love good food you guys who have already been to dollywood know probably the most popular thing is their fresh baked cinnamon bread <laughs> and it did not disappoint we waited till the very end of the day to get it and i mean like 8.55 before the park closed at 9 <laughs> and we hightailed it you know to go look at the pumpkin illuminate lights but um hightailed it to the cinnamon bread factory area like right in the middle of the park there and yes the line was you know 150 people deep but I thought they said if you're in line they're gonna serve you so we stayed and closed the park down we behind did. their cinnamon bread and it was worth the wait this stuff is so freaking good. I was eating it in line to get on the tram before we got to our truck <laughs> to go home or to go back to the camper. It came with icing and apple butter. And then she said, they sold me on two loaves because she's like, the first loaf you're going to eat tonight, probably on your ride home, mm -hmm. which happened. You're going to want a second loaf because you can kind of cut this up and turn it into French toast in the morning. And I was like, game on. Give me two loaves. <laughs> and so that's exactly what we did. I knew I already had eggs at the camper and I had some almond milk I could work with. I think, I don't, it didn't need any more cinnamon at that point. Mm, it's pretty sweet. Just threw it right in the pan and it was freaking delicious. I had already brought syrup because I was planning on making pancakes and I was like, scratch the pancakes. We're eating Dolly cinnamon bread. I will say on Dollywood, like I really enjoyed ourselves, but we made one colossal error when we went to Dollywood. What's that? As soon as we got in, and it was not, it was warm that day, but it wasn't like like hot. We rode a water ride. Oh, yeah. And we got crotch soaked and feet soaked. And it took us a good three hours. To get dry. And actually my feet never dried out. And you know, who, and like, had I known I would have wore flip flops and if Dollywood was smart, they would sell like dry socks right at the end of that ride. But, yeah. but um, I finally, when Valor got in line for her, at the end of the day, when Valor got in line for her, Cinnamon bread. I found a chair and kicked my shoes off for a little while while she was in line and finally got my feet to dry out enough no. that that I was kind of comfortable at nine o'clock at night. But anyway, saying that to say Dollywood's awesome, it reminds me of if any of you guys are from the South, the old Opryland uh, amusement park that was near, well, it's actually where the Opry Mills Mall is now. But it reminded me of that. It's lots of shows. If you like country music, they have all kinds of shows you can watch. And so it's it's a great place for for families of all ages, whether you got small kids uh, or you have kids, teenagers, or you're older and you just want to go enjoy a show and eat good. You can absolutely do that. And so Dollywood will be back. So it Miss, was a go ahead, Miss Dolly. Good job. <laughs> yeah, they even have a church service you can attend, mm. like several times a day or whatever. But um, and sing some gospel music. Yeah, he's right about maybe if they would sell some flip-flops or, or like a cheap pair of dry socks right at the end of the water rides. But I think everyone probably knows when you go to amusement parks, probably should just wear nice, thin athletic wear and maybe in your little backpack because you can bring a bag into the park mm -hmm. and they have lockers all over the place that mm -hmm. you can rent real quick off and on. And you should pack your own, you know, flip-flops or dry wear because... Um, don't be like us and get soaked first thing and then have to deal with it because everybody knows it's no fun wearing, you know, thicker jeans or whatever that are wet for three hours. <laughs> Big mistake on our part. But. Love Dollywood. Anchor down. We'll be back. And where we're going next is...